So, guys, it's about Bernie Sanders. I like Bernie Sanders. You like Bernie Sanders? I'm a big fan. Who here likes Bernie Sanders? A few people. A few people? Take, just in a lot of the country. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, know, you know who, uh, what Bernie does to people that uh, don't like him? Who? What does he do? Gives him side eye. Oh, there we go. Well, <laughs> I got a very interesting article from the New York Times. So listen to this title and tell me what you guys think. Amid Bernie Sanders' resurgence, a progressive coalition endorses him. So it sounds weird. Like, just just a way to even wrote it. Because The Hill actually had a more simplified version of it. Uh, 50 progressive uh, groups endorse Senator Bernie Sanders. But the New York Times has it. Amid Bernie Sanders' resurgence, a progressive coalition endorses him. It almost seems... Well, what, what, it what, almost what, like they're yeah. trying to make it sound contradictory in some way. Yes. So the Center for Popular uh, Democracy Action, a coalition of more than 40, well, the Hill said it was 50, community groups totaling about 600,000 members will on Tuesday endorse Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont for the Democratic presidential nomination, signaling that Mr. Sanders' political standing among the less, uh, party's left wing has rebounded or even ri- risen Months since he suffered a heart attack. So the New York Times is still talking about that. Now, Bernie Sanders didn't have a heart attack. He had stents put in his heart. Well, he had a tiny <clears throat> heart attack. Well, I mean, but let's be real. I mean, the, the, the way they're describing it, though, Daniel, is like he was out of commission. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's just interesting how they uh, write it. But they also shoehorn in Senator Elizabeth Warren and how she was re- uh, at some points surging past him and how he got the endorsement or how she got the endorsement from the Workers' Family Party. But since then now, uh, the New York Times is writing, Mr. Sanders has risen in the polls while Ms. Warren has plateaued. And <clears throat> one of the reasons is that a lot of progressives are trying are right now separating Warren from Sanders. And one of the issues is that Sanders is gaining more of the progressive groups because they like the fact that he's been consistent with a lot of his policies, especially most notably his Medicare for All. Um, also, they do talk about how he got the endorsements from Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashid Tlaib, and Ilan Omar. And right now, uh, the, the, the article also mentions how Mr. Sanders is often preferred by the party's more adherent activists who are not scared off by his willingness to buck democratic tradition. So, <clears throat> I really have to say, um, the, the article is mentioning uh, Warren a lot in here, but it's also trying to indicate that, well, Sanders is the main front runner. So it's like a double, it's a very interesting double standard. They're, they're trying to make Warren relevant with progressives and saying that maybe it's a harder decision for progressives to get that endorsement or, or for, for progressives to uh, figure out which candidate they, they would like to support. But at the end of the day, uh, at the article ends, we need the biggest distinction as possible, and we need someone who can clearly stand up to Trump. And a lot of the progressive groups that were interviewed by the New York Times are saying that Bernie Sanders has what it takes to build a momentum and actually has the character and political history to stand up to Trump and his administration. Daniel, Paul, I want to open this up to you guys. I think uh, as a critique of or a comment on the Bernie Sanders campaign strategy, uh they have maybe the best strategy that can move through the Democratic nominating process into the general election of any of the candidates, right? They have, you know, um, basically a coalition style strategy, a movement strategy, trying to bring people uh, into the fold, trying to to say, look, that it's his whole slogan is it's not me, it's us, right? We this system is broken. We need things that the people have been demanding for decades. Uh, and there, it, there's multiple levels of corruption that, and systematic injustices that prevent this from happening. Uh, he also speaks to uh, some of the working class woes uh, that plague those in the Rust Belt states, right? Which is kind of some key states that maybe were lost in the last election for maybe not wanting to abolish TPP or give a new form of NAFTA. Those type of policy ideas are the kind of things that play well across the aisle. And so I think anyone who's out there still implying that, okay, well, maybe you Democrats like him, but you know, he's too far left. The Democratic base might like it, but it's too far left for the rest of the country. Like that's a tired, tired, tired argument. And it's obviously false. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the New York Times, as always, doing this very interesting political take where it's, you know, pretty obvious where the paper of record, paper of no, whatever they call themselves. It won't be called that for much longer at the rate they're going. Um, This is odd. This is, again, they can't ever just say, hey, Bernie Sanders is doing well. Well, I mean, mean, it's like, it's like, yeah. yeah. 
Well, see, even the way the title of the article, it almost seems like, okay, amid Bernie Sanders' resurgent, a progressive coalition endorses him. It's just odd wordplay. I mean, I would have just... Re- the maybe, word amid. Yeah. The, amid sounds foreboding or something like, whoa, what's what's going on with Sanders? I mean, because like majority of people are just reading the headlines in this in this right. day and age of, of, of social media where we're just scrolling past headlines and everything else. And amid sounds just a little bit different. I mean, the way The Hill, for example, if you compare that article and how it's written, um, it just says... Bernie Sanders gets endorsement of 50 coalition groups. And then that's it. You read it. It's a simplified version. It'd be like saying, despite massive popularity, many people voted for the candidate. Who would have thought? Like, wait, you're making it sound like those are two contradictory. Like, it would make sense if you said, despite massive popularity, the candidate didn't win a popular election. But you're saying two things that seem to, one seems to follow the other. Yeah. Yeah. And and to Kit's point and Paul's point, um, 80%, 80%, generally speaking, 80% of uh, written articles are o- the, only the title is read. Is it scrolled past on Facebook or whatever is out there? 20% of people actually read the article. So always remember that these article titles, they're usually written by someone completely different than the actual uh, journalist, if it is a journalist that is writing those actual yeah. those pieces. So, you know, are we, are we really surprised that... This is the title we're going for. And I'm really yeah. surprised that the first thing they bring up is, oh, he also, don't forget, a heart attack existed yeah. somewhere in the vicinity. So so here's, yeah, okay, so we kind of just talked about the article, but here's the main meat and bones of the story. Here's something that, you know, you guys should take away from this, is that, once again, Bernie Sanders is getting more support from progressive groups and activists. 50 different progressive organizations are going to endorse Senator Bernie Sanders. They want him to be the nominee for this 2020 election cycle. They want him to be the main front runner. They're endorsing him. Once again, Bernie Sanders is building this coalition. I don't see Pete Buttigieg doing this. I don't see Biden doing this. And I don't see Warren or Cory Booker or Amy Klobuchar doing any of this. It's Bernie Sanders that's building the support with grassroots, independents, and progressives. And yeah, even conservatives too want to help support Bernie Sanders for him to get this nomination and to go on to the general election. I'm gonna be it's gonna be really, really curious to see how corporate media is gonna start titling all their articles if Bernie Sanders gets a nomination. I think it's gonna be hilarious.